Hey guys, it's G. I thought it would just be easier for me to do a sh small video for you to show you actually how to pull the email headers as opposed to trying to explain it to you via Facebook. Um, in this example, I'm going to show you Gmail. Now, pulling email headers will definitely differ depending on which email client, but in this case, I'm going to show you Gmail. So here, I'm just going to pick an email and we are going to go to the right hand side if I could pull it I'm having there you go I'm having some screencast issues oh there you go okay so you're gonna go to the drop down and you're gonna look for a show original basically what this is it will show you the entire email so it'll show you the text the actual email headers the text version the actual full email actual a um the full html of the email it's quite a large html but what you're actually looking for is the information at the top you're actually looking for the email header this is basically the holy grail for the emailers you should as an emailer understand what every part of this actual header is made up of and what they mean but in this example i'm just going to show you how to actually pull your ip address so what you're looking for is all this information. Now you may not know how to decipher the information. However, what I sometimes do is to make things a little bit cleaner, what I'll do is I will put it, put it into an email analyzer. So if you go to mxtoolbox.com, they have this great little analyzer header and you're gonna copy paste and it'll break down all the lines for you. This way it'll make it a little bit cleaner. Now there's a lot of really good information in your email headers, which is why I say it's basically the holy grail for emailers. You need to understand it. But in this case, what we're looking at is you want to be able to pull your IP. So you'll see a couple of IP addresses in the actual email header. The first one you'll notice is the actual receiving IP from Gmail. So, and, but what you're looking for is the actual sending IP. You want to know the IP space for that actual sender. So in this case, what you're looking at is for the, you're going to look at the received SPF line, and this will actually tell you which IP it was sent off of. So now that you've had the IP, what you want to do is this is step one when it comes to delivery issues, delivery issues. There could be many factors. This is why trying to swap out a domain to solve your delivery issue is not always recommended especially if you're doing it every couple of weeks. If you're swapping out domains every couple of weeks, then obviously you have a problem. However, this is why I'm saying what you want to do, number one, is check your IP space, especially if you're on a shared IP space. You can't control your neighbors. You have no idea who's sending. This is why you need to always, number one, send a test prior, look at your actual IP. You want to see the actual IP health. And then you also want to, you know, maybe sneak in and look at what your neighbors are doing. So now that you have this IP, you're gonna just copy. And typically what I do is I'll paste it into a sender score. Now remember, these tools are not the holy grail. Don't take these tools for, or don't take the results of what you get on return path as solid indications that you should be getting into inbox. A 99% on sender score does not mean that you're gonna get inbox across the board doesn't mean anything it just means that you have a very good reputation in terms of actual email but it should be used with a grain of salt and used as a guideline so here you'll notice the actual um, score and you'll notice a couple of other things as well you'll see the recent campaigns that were actually sent out through that actual IP and this will actually give you a nice indication as to what other type of emails are being sent from your IP so in this case, these are all uh, team buys, and these are basically all daily deal offers. But the information you're really looking for is, number one, is your IP blacklisted? If you notice there's a low rate of blacklisting, then you're not on any major blacklists. However, what you should do is always check, number one, your domain on any blacklist alert. If one of your domains is listed on the actual blacklist alert, if it's one of the majors, then yes, you have a major delivery issue. But remember, you typically only get blacklisted if you're getting some major complaints or you're hitting or you're hitting basically a pretty bad spam trap, then chances are you will get blacklisted. So you need to really monitor your data. 
You also want to look at your complaints. Uh, your complaints are low. Granted, as I said before, I mean, it's kind of hard to gauge all of this information via the actual free report on return path. The message filter rate is also extremely important. Sender rejection, low, you'll see. Spam traps is zero. So these guys are doing an impeccable job in terms of actual hygiene. They are doing extremely well. So kudos to them. So in this case that you notice, uh, if this was your actual sending IP and you notice that you have everything low across the board, but you're still experiencing delivery issues, as I said before, there are a lot of other factors. However, I'm not going to get into that right now. What I just wanted to show you was how to actually pull the email headers and be able to pull the IP so you can check it. If you guys have any questions or concerns, uh, you can always contact me. Ask me any questions. I'd be happy to help. Thanks so much.